Hello dear friends of woodworking and a very good day to you. Welcome to a new and very special episode of Felder TV. 70 minutes of in-depth know-how, including working procedures, application techniques and lots of tips and tricks. Great to have you with us, because today it's going to be incredibly intense. We are building an item in our workshop that you won't be able to buy anywhere else like this. A designer piece of furniture with two functions. A lounge chair for kicking back and relaxing in front of your TV on the one hand. And at the same time with a feature that everyone will absolutely love. soothingly warming infrared radiation for the most stressed part of our body, the spine. An utmost challenging piece of work with very complex connections and unusual working methods. It might look difficult at first glance, but our master carpenter Heli will show you just how easy it is to make such complex joints and machining with the highest degree of precision and safety, step by step through the process. At the core of our hammer workshop is the Hammer C331, the smallest combination machine among the Hammer product range. Of course, our tried and tested Hammer Bandsaw N4400 is also on board. And as an addition, introduced our new Hammer CNC router, the Hammer HNC. This machine offers a whole new range of possibilities for the craftsman. So make yourself comfortable and join us as we create this beautiful piece of furniture from rough boards over the next 70 minutes. You can download all information and planning documents from our website. We start our project by cutting and trimming the rough boards. The timber we use is elm. The boards cut from it are also known as elm burl. In addition to its particularly beautiful appearance, elm is known for its very low shrinking behavior. Our C331 converts to trimming in just a few seconds. As an allowance for the width of the boards, we add about five millimeters. Important. We think of our reference pieces now, as they make it easier for us to carry out various adjustments later down the line, for example when performing test milling or checking fits. All parts are now cut to size according to the blueprint cutting list. Next, we move on to planing. As usual, changeover on our smallest combination machine is very quick and simple. We begin with the parts for the seat and backrest. Tip. Always plane the concave side of your workpiece first. The solid, vibration-free cast iron tables are of course of great advantage. You get a better planing result right from the get-go and you will also notice a much more efficient workflow. Our rough boards measure 52 millimeters in thickness. The finished size for seat and backrest 
is 27 millimetres. Our master carpenter therefore recommends splitting the boards so that not everything ends up in the waste bag. This gives us two advantages. The tensions in the wood are relieved and valuable raw material can be kept for further use. You could also buy thinner boards, but there would be a higher chance that the boards won't originate from the same log. Elm in particular can vary considerably in colour from one log to another. We keep an excess of about 3 millimetres. We save the remaining parts for the next project which is sure to come. We plane the already cut parts once again so that tension deformations in the wood are compensated. We reposition our hammer for better access to thickness planing. No problem with the help of a rolling carriage. Change over from planing to thicknessing is as usual very simple. The heavy cast iron tables can be opened effortlessly thanks to the spring support. To increase the support surface on the outfeed we use table extensions. Consequently, the planing process becomes more comfortable. We set the thicknessing height and switch on the machine. With a feed speed of 6 meter, planing is done fast. And a helpful tip from Heli, you can plane narrower workpieces simultaneously by feeding them on both sides of the table. The planing result speaks for itself. After having planed all the parts to perfection, we now proceed to producing the seat and the backrest. Not only did we choose the strongest wood joints, but also the most stylish ones. It's a bit more effort, but it pays off. Slot and tenon for the corner joints. Mortised tenon for the backrest. And through tenon for the hinged between backrest and seat. These joints are above all noteworthy for their contemporary design. It does not get any better than this. Let's move on to cutting now. The C331 in panel saw mode is now equipped with an additional support surface, a cross-cut fence and a fine sizing saw blade. Now it's time to decide how we want to showcase the beautiful wood grain. Master Carpenter Heli decides based on the wood pattern and colour gradient, as well as core and sapwood areas. And therefore also adds a more personal and individual touch to the lounge chair. The parts are now marked with a triangle marking. An additional marking of the components is also useful as it helps to avoid mistakes and confusion in all subsequent operations especially when working on projects over a longer period of time.
Obviously, our C331 comes with a fully fledged milling function. An adjustable slot cutter with a diameter of 250 millimeters is mounted. The shims are placed in such a way that a slot of 12 millimeters can be milled. Optimum extraction is achieved with the tenoning hood. But more importantly, it ensures the utmost safety. The splinter block prevents the workpiece from unwanted tearing. It is particularly important for this type of work that the workpiece is held firmly in place. To do so, we use an eccentric clamp. Remember, always check the rotation speed before each milling process. A very useful piece of advice, marking the slot and tenon directly on the workpieces gives us the certainty that we always have the right part in our hands. This way, there can be no mix-ups. For height setting, it is advisable to mark the slot with a marking gauge. The knives of the slot cutter are now set precisely to the height of the marking. Kelly recommends attach a piece of sandpaper to the supporting piece which will increase stability and the workpiece will not be displaced by the cutting pressure. Perform trial cuts on a test piece to determine the exact centre. With the cross-cut fence, the cutting depth is easily set. When converting to tenon milling, the top and bottom of the slot cutter are simply swapped. And of course the shims need to be adjusted again. The height is also adjusted at sight with the main cutters. Again, we recommend that you cut a test piece first. The finished joint should not be too tight nor too loose. 
fits perfectly. The tenon is milled to a depth of 30 mm on both sides. We now proceed to create the slots for the cut and mortise tenons. For this purpose we use our mortising unit for hammer machines. The mortising unit is simply attached and bolted in place. A 12mm precision slot cutter is used for the cut and mortised slot, which guarantees the best results. You'll find all dimensions on the blueprint, however, it would be best to transfer the actual dimensions directly to the components. This guarantees a perfect fit and previously made adjustment tolerances can be compensated. The longitudinal rungs of the backrest are traced starting from the centre. Again we use the moulding gauge to scratch a mark on a test piece, then we adjust the height to the mark. Using the thumb screw, we set the cutting depth which is slightly above the centre of the workpiece. Here you can see the advantage of a slot cutter compared to a conventional mortising bit. The slot is cut with a depth offset of approximately 5 millimetres. The depth setting for the moulded slot is around 1mm deeper than the tenons. Now all we need is the slotted hole for the angle adjustment on the backrest. It is marked according to the blueprint.
high-precision slot cutter is used again, this time with a diameter of 8 mm. Notice how the slotted hole is milled off-centre. A bit of manual work is necessary after all, but with a well-sharpened chisel, it's done rather quickly. Fits perfectly. A tip from Heli. Prior to gluing, it is advisable to assemble the workpieces. This way there are no unexpected surprises and possible problems can still be fixed. Prior to gluing, however, the heating element needs to be machined. Either according to the blueprint, even better though, if you work with the actual dimensions again. For this purpose, we use a rebate cutter. Before we start gluing, we sand the inner edges manually, simply because it's easier done on the loose workpieces. Heli recommends gluing sandpaper to a piece of wood avoids unintentional rounding of the inner edges. We use aggregate size up to 240. On our perfectly plain surface, this is done very quickly and easily. Another tip before gluing, to avoid having to remove any glue residue later, it is advisable to mask off the inside corners. With slot and tenon joints, glue always escapes from the insides. Removing it is always quite difficult. For more complex assemblies, Master Carpenter Heli recommends viscous epoxy resin instead of wood glue. Slot and tenon joints absorb conventional white glue very quickly and gluing under time pressure is not recommended. Unlike with epoxy resin, it gives us plenty of time for adjustments and touch-ups. All surfaces to be glued are coated. Do not tighten the clamps on the outside too much. To align the components perfectly, we only need a little pressure. Slot and tenon joints always produce a right angle, but it never hurts to check. All corners are clamped using short clamps and laminated chipboard shims. Combined, this makes for a lasting bond for life. Let it all cure overnight. In the meantime, we continue working on the frame. The side parts are cut according to the blueprint. 
We start by cutting the mitres on the outside corners. For length compensation, we have provided a helpful calculation program available for download. Simply enter the angle and the desired dimension and the required length is automatically displayed. With this method, the tedious approach to finding the right mitre is completely eliminated. Of course, the mitre stop on the cross-cut fence comes as standard on the C331, so that even acute angles can be made with absolute precision. The centre bar is cut at 7 degrees. One side at plus 7 degrees. And in order to align perfectly, the other side is cut at minus 7 degrees. To ensure that nothing moves out of place during gluing and that the exact positions are maintained, we drill 8mm reference holes into all joints. A piece of wood cut to 45 degrees serves as an auxiliary stop. The next step is particularly important because it is what makes our chair design possible in the first place. The magic word is finger joints. A strong and elegant connection at particularly critical joints. Inspired by the tubular steel classics such as the Bauhaus furniture by Marcel Breuer, we create these tubular curves in wood as well. If you were to work with dowel connections in solid wood, such a construction would be much too weak. With finger joints, however, the gluing area increases by a factor of three and a half. Also, you do not glue end grain to end grain, which would result in low stability. Instead, you achieve a surface bonding through flat, milled finger joints. In addition, the sanded finish looks simply fantastic. It creates a sense of fascination and admiration. Adjusting the finger joint cutter is very easy. Heli shows you how. The setup is easy. To achieve the maximum number of mini V-teeth, we adapt the number of insert rings. The dimension of the milling tool is thus adapted to the thickness of the wood. In our case, we use two ring inserts.
For adjusting the spindle height, we took a mathematical approach. In other words, we marked the wood with the cutter knife to determine the zero point. In this position, the digital clock is inserted with value zero. The cutting height adjustment is now calculated using a mathematical formula. This formula is well described in the cutting plan and it works at the first go. We start off with our obligatory test pieces in order to reach the specified milling depth of precisely 5 millimetres. A perfect match. No excess material perceptible. All corner joints are now processed in the same way. There's no need to make further adjustments to the moulder spindle. It is important that the work pieces are firmly held in place, so we use the eccentric clamp again. There are several ways to carry out longitudinal milling. We decide on a more reliable approach and use the band saw to cut out a section in which the router can fit. In doing so, we can safely guide the work pieces to be milled. A 10mm band saw blade is ideal. It's now important to check whether the cutter can move freely within the cutout without touching the workpiece. The moulding guard is set so that the workpiece is pressed on perfectly. With the push handle XL, you can work absolutely safely. Once the area is moulded, switch off the machine. The engine brake stops the cutter quickly and the next workpiece can be clamped. Pay attention to the triangle markings. When moulding lengthways, the markings should be on the top side. This means that the centre bar must show the triangle markings on the bottom side. 
the cutting angle is set to 7 degrees. The mitre clamps are now used to pre-assemble the sides. If all settings have been made accurately, everything fits together perfectly. If not, it is still possible to make the necessary adjustments. All right, we have already made a big step forward. It's now time to finish the side parts. To do this, we are going to build a template. This requires absolute precision because the contour of the template is transferred one-to-one -one onto the workpiece. And here you can see what we are looking for. We want to go from here to here. Granted, an exciting challenge. I am curious to know which way our master carpenter Heli has opted for. 18mm concrete formwork plywood is the perfect material. Preferably smooth on both sides. The template can be produced traditionally using a marking gauge and compass. All necessary measurements can be found in the blueprint. The best way, of course, is to draw the entire contour of the template. Precision is particularly important in this case because, as already mentioned, the contour of the template will later be copy milled one to one onto the workpieces. Then the hand router can be used for cutting along the fence with a circular cutter. But we are lucky to have the hammer HNC in our workshop. With the HNC we can have the template milled out quite conveniently, so to speak, at the push of a button. The 3D drawings and moulding files are of course included in our download package. Within just a few minutes the template is cut out absolutely precisely.
bridges hold the parts of the template in place. Since we already have the HNC running, we cut out the headrest right away. You could also produce the headrest conventionally on the C331 using a template and a guide ring. Bridges are simply cut away with the Japanese saw. We use the advantage of the multifunctional quick change system on our C331. We simply change to the molder spindle with a flush trimming cutter and remove the excess material comfortably and cleanly. The template components are simply glued together with express glue. The CNC dovetail joints hold the parts together perfectly. The template is positioned evenly spaced and the contour is transferred using a parallel marker, leaving a margin of approximately 3 mm. Any excess material is cut off on the bandsaw. We use a 6mm blade. It cuts tight radii very well. Last check, and we're ready for gluing. For this type of gluing, polyurethane glue is best suited. It has the best adhesive strength properties. White glue is absorbed too quickly by the end grain. The corner joints are held in position with mitre clamps. They pull the glue joint together pretty well. The centre bar is backed with a clamp. Due to the perfect fit, only moderate pressure is needed. 
The dried glue can be removed very easily with a sharp chisel. We kept the outside corners only so that the mitre clamps could be attached. Now these are also cut away using the bandsaw. Now we get to a particular step in the process, the copy milling. This task is very daunting for many hobbyists and indeed this is justified because the molding tool is more exposed than usual. With the necessary know-how and the appropriate safety equipment this type of work is significantly easier and above all it's much safer. With the molding guard supplied as part of the standard equipment it is possible to mold the outer contours but it is difficult to do so on the inner surfaces. Master Carpenter Heli has come up with a very special molding protection device for this task. Not only does it provide maximum safety, its user friendliness is such that you won't want to stop molding. Instructions on how to build this device can be found on the download section. Let's take a look at it now. The most beautiful results are achieved with a spiral groove cutter equipped with HW reversible knives. The guide ring has the same diameter as the cutter. The workpiece can therefore be copied with absolute precision. With the extraction hose connected, the workshop remains clean. The moulding guard can be easily lifted to position the workpiece quickly and accurately. A secure hold of the template is particularly important here, so we screw it down, at the corners and in the middle. 80 mm diameter, 10,000 revolutions and the reversible knives with pulling cut result in a surface that hardly needs any finishing. Merely minimal sanding might be necessary. The height is adjusted so that the cutter works the whole workpiece and the guide ring is well positioned against the template. Important! Milling may only be carried out in counter-rotating direction. Always make sure beforehand that you feed the material correctly.
no chipping, even against the wood grain. And the surface is absolutely free of any processing marks. The result feels perfect. Let's turn back to the seat and the backrest. Thanks to the masking, almost no additional work is necessary on the inside. The epoxy is easy to sand and can be removed quickly with an average orbital disc sander. Only the surfaces are to be sanded. Minor excess glue at the corner joints is carefully cut away on the sliding table saw. Now we mark the cutouts for the hinge joint. As usual, we transfer the actual dimensions. Cutting is done at the mark. The sacrificial board on the back serves for a tear-free cut. The joint should not be too tight, nor should it be too loose. To ensure smooth rotation, the radius cutter is used to help with the hinge function. During this process we also continue milling the desired outer curvature on the seat and the backrest. A great advantage when using the moulder spindle is being able to work in combination with the sliding table. The workpiece is guided consistently and safely as shown here, vertically aligned and backed with a sacrificial board to protect from tearing. The rip fence ensures that the workpiece is guided all the way to the guide bearing. The seat is connected to the side panels with 12mm dowels. Six dowels per side make for an extremely stable connection. The positions of the dowels are transferred to all parts using a template. It is definitely worth making such a template, as measuring errors and imprecise marking can be entirely avoided. The holes for the headrest are also drilled at this point. These are bored with a 10mm drill bit. Pay attention to protect against tearing on the inside. The 
bore the holes on the backrest side of the headrest as deep as possible. The holes for the hinge are bored in the seat and backrest at the same time. A piece of veneer provides some clearance at the hinge. Here too, drill as deep as possible. Everything fits perfectly. For the side pieces, only the first dowel needs to be marked. The template indicates the subsequent holes. The template height acts as a guide to ensure that all holes are bored straight. A piece of tape marks the boring depth. For the angle adjustment of the backrest, we drill M6 threaded sockets. You can put them any place you like. A tip from Heli, when screwing in threaded sockets, it is advisable to ream the holes thoroughly. Before sanding, the holes are sealed with the wooden plugs previously milled on the HNC. Now all that's left to do is shape the radius on the edges of the side pieces. We decided on using a radius of 5 mm. All edges are shaped completely.
done. An awesome result, which lets you anticipate what kind of precious piece of furniture this is to become. Now everything is ready for sanding. Not the most popular task. However, an activity with almost meditative qualities. With your own hands, you can feel on the workpiece you have just created how the surfaces change into a visual and tactile masterpiece. The first step towards finishing is to oil the seat and backrest. We use linseed oil varnish because this oil lights up the wood grain beautifully. Attention to not oil the surfaces with the dowel holes. Now everything is ready. Let's start with the final assembly. Stainless steel rods hold the joint together. And the dowel connections are joined with standard white glue. Everything fits as it should. A few short clamps push the connection together. The HNC is a real helper, even in the smallest workspaces. The possibility of producing everything from the simplest to the most complex components opens the door to a whole new approach, even as early as in the stage of coming up with an idea. For example, this bending device to shape the stainless steel rods for the headrest. Of course, they can also be bent in a conventional way, but with the CNC bending device, this can be done precisely and easily. And we end up with two identically bent rods. A 
final check. Any machining marks can now be removed, but everything fits perfectly. Ultimately, oiling a piece of homemade furniture is probably one of the most beautiful tasks in woodworking. Starting from the very first moment of putting our pieces of wood together, we finally reached this moment. The unique beauty of the grain of our elm really pops out now. Especially curves, in other words, spherical shapes, are now beautifully displayed. Lounge chair is now finished and ready for completion. For the back cover, we have once again come up with something special, making use of our HNC again. This extraordinarily beautiful back piece came from one single block that was shaped on both sides. Our master carpenter Heli could not resist his enthusiasm and continued to cut out the control elements for the infrared function with the HNC. Finally finished, our Hammer Infrared Lounge Chair. With creativity and a love for woodworking, our Master Carpenter Heli has shown us how to create a classy and remarkable piece of furniture from rough wooden boards. With his creativity and love for woodworking, our master carpenter Heli has created this exclusive piece of furniture from rough boards. 
It is hard to believe that such a complex project can be realized with our small but powerful Hammer workshop. However, with proper planning and a little patience, you can make it happen. You already have the most important prerequisites for this. The dedication and passion for perfect woodworking. The blueprints for the lounge chair for the templates and the CNC files are available for you to download. And we thank you for joining us. We, that's our master carpenter, Heli, and the man behind the camera, responsible for video productions since decades and also for everything else. For all the technical stuff, for the cut, for the sound, lightning, directing. Anything I've missed? That's right, he also makes the best coffee in the studio, our Alex. If you have any questions, requests or suggestions, please let us know in the comment section. We wish you lots of fun and good luck with the reproduction. Greetings from Tyrol.